everything lost will be renewed Long ago in the garden it was to be Now a dream fulfilled in you and me whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 welcome to all you beautiful people <laughs> By now, you probably know, if you've listened to a number of episodes You know that I don't like to waste much time I just get right into what I'm going to talk about because I don't like to just sit there and listen to somebody talk about the how they've been doing episodes and podcasts and stuff like that. When I'm listening to a podcast, I like to get right into it. But today is episode 15. I've been doing this for a little while now. And I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's listened. But also, I, you know, I didn't really think that that necessarily when I first started that how much it would really start to flow. And I knew I had ideas and I'd been praying about it for a while. But the coming into doing this, I was a little bit nervous, a little bit, uh, you know, not, not sure. And I, it's, it's been a really just a blessing to be doing this. I've enjoyed it. And each time I think, okay, well, what am I going to do next time? I start praying about it and, and God just puts things on my heart or I encounter a situation where something comes up in another conversation and I'm like, wow, that's a great topic. That's something that needs to be explored. And I've got many ideas in the back of my head, but I just want to be led by the spirit of God to know exactly when to talk about what today, <clears throat> today, this hot topic uh, to discuss was in my heart for, it's been in my heart for a long time. I've dealt with so many different situations, but it just came up recently. And I want to be very sensitive because there are things that, that are true on both sides of this topic that I don't want to ignore, but also people have ideas and I don't want to trample on the experience that somebody has, but I just want to open up some ideas that God has put in my heart. And so the topic that I want to discuss is the idea that believers should go through dry seasons or seasons of dryness where there's times where we're reading our Bible, where we're in prayer, we're experiencing things and God is moving on our hearts. He's present. He's close. We feel intimacy. And then there are times when we read our Bible and we don't get anything out of it or we pray and we feel like the, the prayers hit are hitting the ceiling. We're not getting a, any response. We're not feeling the connection with God or sensing. I like to use the word sensing because sometimes we talk about feelings way too much because feelings can be a negative thing. It can be just what I feel today. Maybe I'm grumpy because I haven't eaten and I'm hangry and I just, and I just have different emotional things or I didn't sleep well last night. So our emotions get impacted by many different things. And so I don't want to emphasize that. I know that some people get caught up in that and emotionalism is not a good thing. Emotionalism is when our emotions control what we think and what we do instead of the truth, instead of the reality of what is, you can be very excited about doing something. You can make plans to go on a, on a trip and you wake up the morning of the trip and you don't feel good. And so all of a sudden you're not excited about it. If you just were emotional, you would just say, well, okay, we'll just cancel the trip. We won't do what we had planned because I don't feel like doing it. Those type of feelings are not a good thing. God wants us to, to never be governed by those feelings because they lie to us. Because our feelings can be controlled by many different sources. And the thoughts or the feelings are just, just simply really the way we sleep. Because you can take a nap. And when you go through a nap, there's a chemical process in your brain when you're sleeping that kind of resets your mind and your life. Well, when you don't have a long sleep or you have a bad sleep or you're tossing and turning, those things don't necessarily get reset and your emotions can feel many things. So you have to actually wake yourself up, decide what you want to do, what you need to do. And all of a sudden your body's chemicals um, in your brain and everything will start to get back to the way they're supposed to. And you can start having a proper set of feelings. So I don't want to get caught up too much talking about feelings, but the seasons of dryness are things that we sense, things that we sense the closeness or the nearness of God. And, or the, or like sense that he's far away. And so it's not necessarily about feelings. It is something that actually happens. And it's very tempting to believe that God designed our walk to experience those dry times because it's a real thing that most or nearly all believers are going to go through many times over and over and over again. And those times are often simply that God has withdrawn. He's withdrawn his presence from us because we are living in a way where it's sinful. 
If we ha- if we are doing things that are that are ungodly or just not being spiritually minded, which you know, there's different levels. Uh, I know that some, this might make some people uncomfortable, but not all sins are sins unto death. Some sins are just sins that that knock us off track or keep us from accomplishing the things that we should the best way or even at all at that moment. So there are different kinds of sins, and so. Sometimes we start living in a sinful way, being being less than spiritual, not being uh, being having our hearts attention to the things that matter, to the things that are really going to build us, the things that God wants us to be about so that we can grow our life. That doesn't mean we're not supposed to recreate. You know me. I've talked about that many times. I have to put that in there. God wants us to have times to relax, to to enjoy life with family and friends, and not everything is some deep revelation or spiritual encounter because those those moments build us they encourage us they strengthen us and empower us so those things are good especially the more we have god in the middle of all those types of things where the presence of his because god god is not always just a heavy serious uh, um revelation or or intense moment before him. Jesus clearly manifests that in the way that he celebrated the wedding and the way that he he enjoyed life. You can see him and drawing people to him because people are not drawn to someone who's always seriously minded. He, they're drawn to somebody who is kind, who is generous, who is um, a pleasure to be around. And so we see that in, in Jesus himself. And I know this very clearly. Some of the best times I've had that actually God was able to then speak to me very clearly came through having a good time, having having a blessed time of fun, not so much serious and deep, but very, very good and godly. It strengthened me, encouraged me, and allowed me to be at peace and at rest because we have to recover. We have to recover from from hard work. We have to recover from also intense moments. We cannot do the same thing. And so that goes that kind of talks about seasons and how things change. There are differences. There are different moments. And because many believers experience this, the idea comes into our heads that that's the way God designed it. He designed for us to go through dry seasons. And so we, if we remain consistent, if we remain consistent in our study, in our pursuit of God, even though we're not sensing it, we're not feeling the presence of God, or we're not here really getting a whole lot or anything that we can tell out of reading the scriptures or going to church, you know, we go and we just don't sense that there's really anything spoken that touched me or encouraged me. And so we, we go through this times where we just feel like we're distant and it's really easy to attach to the idea that that's the way God designed it because you talk to other people, they experience the same thing and you will sit there and agree with each other. Yep. That's, that's, that's real. That's, that's, and it is true. It is real. We do experience those things in different ways, but I want to share an idea and testify about what I think is really happening. And also I want to testify of my own life. In my life, I was, I encountered God in a real way at a young age. I gave my life to to the Lord a few years later because as as I grew from a young age, I experienced, when I say young, like eight, nine, ten years old, had conversations and encounters with other friends about God and, and I knew that he was real. And then I gave my life to him at 12 years old and my life as I grew, I recognized that I had this, the closeness, this intimacy with God that I always knew that he was there with me. It wasn't, he wasn't distant. He wasn't far other than when I chose to walk away. When I, when as in weakness, moments of weakness, I, and you know, coming of age, growing, there's many different choices, many different times where you're tempted and you fail. And I definitely, I sensed the withdrawal of God and, and I longed for it. I longed for his presence. And I remember one time, in a failure, I spent almost a year where I was just, I just never felt like I had that intimacy. And I was, I was wondering why. And it was because God knew that there was something in my heart, in my life that had to be removed in order for him to truly fellowship with me. And so what, as he digs, as he's cultivating in my life and he's digging through it, when, he, when we encounter that, if I hold on to it and it doesn't just come out of my life, if I leave it in there and I, I continue to live and operate in a wrong and a sinful way, God can't, can't stay there. He can't continue to develop in me because I'm resistant and God is holy and just. And so he will give me the the space to do what I choose to do. And he will also 
continue in another area, in another way to try to get me to come around to that. But those are the only times that I've ever experienced distance from God. That doesn't mean that I don't wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, I don't just feel the presence of God. Yes, that happens to all of us. But he's near. He's he's he all those th- those times like that are just trying to reveal that hey, I need to focus on him. I need to draw near to him because and he will draw near to me. There's not I, I have never and for years and years, and this may sound weird to some people, but I can testify that virtually every day of my life, I have had a close just sense of the presence of God. I don't go days. I don't go weeks. Sometimes I have, like I said, in moments when when God was trying to get my attention and show me where I was in error. But this is not my normal experience. This has never been a, the normal Christian experience to me. And for years, I believe that I actually thought that all believers, I thought all believers were, were having this experience. And it wasn't until my late 20s that through many different conversations and times, I started hearing people talk about these type of things, about dryness, about season changes and different things in their life, and talked about the presence of God and how they sometimes feel feel him close and other times they don't. And they started qualifying and saying that it's a good thing, saying that they actually think that this is what God wants them to experience. Um, and then also I started talking to many Christians who had been Christians for a long time, 10, 20, even 30 years, and they had never really experienced. They were talking about how they just walked by faith. They believed that they were saved. They believed that in the truth of what the gospel was, but they had never really had an encounter where there was an intimate, true, just, just closeness where you fellowship, not just in the sense that you feel this, but also I encounters of, of having God speak to you very closely, how he encourages you through hardship and how he's just, there's, there's this, a real relationship that goes on. I heard many Christians talking about not ever having experienced that. And so that's two different things, season of dryness and this, but this came, comes up along with it. And I just want to dispel that those are lies. I do not believe that those are truth at all. I do not believe that God designed us to have these seasons of dryness. He causes us to go through them to correct us. But when we stay in his presence, as as long as we are diligently and faithfully following him, I do not believe that seasons of dryness are what God designed for us to experience. I know I have not experienced that in any other form other than, than him withdrawing himself to, to that other than one other way. Sometimes he will withdraw himself for a moment, and it's a short period of time. This is not a, I would not call it a season of dryness. It is, it is a moment. It's, usually it's hours, but sometimes it's days where he withdraws because he longs to see me pursue him. It's a romantic type of gesture. Not that he wants to be away from me, but he wants to see because it's beautiful to him to to experience and see my affection, my desire for him, and to come looking for him, just like the the woman in in the Song of Solomon, where she runs out in the street looking for um, <laughs> looking for her love, and she's like, "Have you seen my love? Or have you have you seen him?" And she's crying out, looking for him. But it also turns into a praise because she starts talking about how great he is, how beautiful he is, and how what he is to her and what he means. And so it, it's a it's an opportunity to express this. So it stops being a question. It becomes, "Have you seen my lover? Have you seen him?" It becomes a, a, a an evangelistic message of, "Have you seen it?" Because she loves him so dearly. And so the presence of God withdraws sometimes for this romantic thing. And I love that. That is a, that is a different aspect that I wasn't really necessarily planning on talking a lot about here, but I wanted to express it because that is something that touches me so deeply. The the sense of being close to him, this, this adventure of the relationship is something that sadly, like I said, many, many believers have never experienced. Um, and I think, um, God wants them to experience it. He wants us to actually embrace this because this is the type of relationship, the intimacy, the closeness that God wants us to experience is that, that it's available to us he desires it because he he loves. He is a lover. He is somebody who expresses love and he but he also is pure. He's perfect in his expression of love. So it's not selfish, but it's also not going to be poured out in futile vain ways. He desires to see us and experience our love so that we can experience it 
and pursue him and go after him in, in a romantic gesture of of leaving a trail, so to speak, of something to follow. And so we go pursue him and we look for him and we ask about him in our hearts, in our minds, we're, we're pursuing him. We're, and, and then boom, we find him, we encounter him in a new, fresh place in a, in a new, and he, you know, just like you see in, in stories, you read books and watch movies and, and people have this place that they meet, you know, that's a, a romantic place that they, that they have means something to them. Maybe it's a, a a field that they used to take walks on in or 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 maybe it's a it's a view where they can sit and just watch the sunset you know something of that nature well god does that for us he he wants us to find him in different places so that we can have this attachment to him we can have this memory we can have this this thing that we can go back to that when we are under attack when we go through hardship we remember it and we can actually in our spirit, we can go right to it sometimes, but also just it's a place of strength to know that we have this connection with God. Very, very beautiful, very, very real. But back to the idea of, of dry seasons. I've heard it discussed and taught that this is the way it's supposed to be. And you should accept it and you should simply just press through. And I don't have a problem with that. Like I said, I want to be sensitive to this. I don't have a bit of problem with pressing through a dry season, but I do think that we can miss something in that pressing through. If we are just pressing through the dry season, meaning that we're just going to go on doing what we know is right, we miss something. What do we miss? We miss the very reason why we're in that dry season. And so this is a lie that is easily thrown in there. It slides in there. Satan puts in a lie to get us to, to miss the purpose. Now, there is a good purpose in pressing through. So I want to encourage that. Continue to read. Continue to pray. Continue to do the things that you know are good, that will strengthen you, even if you don't feel it right then. So absolutely do those things. But be very aware that there's a reason for it. There's a reason for it. And that reason is... I believe always because there's something else going on. Maybe we have put something else in our mind, in our pursuit above God. Maybe it was, maybe we started college. <laughs> we started focusing and having a lot of things that we had to do and, and our life changed. And so we, we took on responsibility and we find that, that we've actually put that in a place above the reality of knowing God above the reality of, of our relationship with God. And so we're in a dry season before we realize it. We have not gone to the well. We have not gotten that drink, that fresh uh, drink from the spirit of God. And so we're in a season of dryness. And so we're not feeling it and we're just pressing it. We're like, well, I'm going to keep going to church. I'm going to keep reading my Bible. Well, and eventually we do get to the other side of that. But some of that, that's just the grace of God that we get to the other side of it because he finds a way to work around and, and develop in us. And I don't want to waste that time though. I don't want to waste weeks, months, or in most cases, it's longer periods of time. Even years go by in these so-called dry seasons or seasons of dryness that, that are not, they're not healthy. They're not the way, they do not develop the things of God in us on levels that they, that being intimate with him and, and searching the scriptures. <laughs> you know, I love searching the scripture because I want to, experience and know God. I don't, I don't read the scriptures because I, I think I have to, or because if I don't, then I'm going to be deceived. I don't, I don't do it out of fear. Yes. Yes. If I'm not searching the scripture and I don't know that the word of God, yes, I can be deceived. And yes, it is something that is necessary to build our, our life on, but that's not why I do it. Those are not, I do it out of faith, out of desire and maintaining that is very, very important. I don't go to church because I think I have to. I go to church because I love to. I love to be with other people. I love to join with the spirit of other people, especially when you get there, get to be in fellowship with people who are hungry, who desire God. That is such a, a powerful, powerful experience. When two people or three or four people or a hundred people who are hungry for God come together, it is beautiful. It, it, it breaks down strongholds. It brings forth the anointing of God. But if we're all walking in dryness um, and accepting that this dryness and missing the point, we become vulnerable. We become vulnerable to having 
a, a relationship that is less dynamic. It is not so interactive with God. It is not. Um, it doesn't have the the dunamos, the power of the Spirit of God that was in Christ Jesus begins to dissipate because we are accepting less. And that's that's to me that's the key that I see in this that we're accepting less. We're not saying I believe there's more. We're saying well. This is, since this is my experience, then it must be what all there is. And that is not true. Just because of what our experience is, our um, friend's experience, or maybe even our pastor or leaders have had this same experience and they teach us this, we come into agreement with it, does not mean that it is true. Just because we experience it doesn't mean it's the way that God designed or desires for your life to go. It may be very true that you are experiencing it, but it is not the way that God desires you to be. He wants to actually give us this vision, this this understanding that the correction needs to take place. And as we as the correction takes place, that we experience fewer, fewer moments of separation, of dryness, of not having that intimacy. And I want to go back to the feelings. Feeling God is not a bad thing. (laughs) Feeling excited about God is not a bad thing. Feeling joy because of God is not a bad thing. Our feelings are intended to be something we experience. It's when our feelings are out of line. Like David said many times, he says, "Why why are you cast down, O my soul? Why are you down? Why are you depressed? You know better. You know who God is, and you correct your emotions, even when you're going through a hard time, even when you're going through a difficult season like losing a loved one. You can you can correct. You're supposed to mourn. Mourning is okay, but but Paul gives us an admonition to, to not mourn, to live as though we don't mourn. Don't be consumed by this mourning. We have to recognize that, hey, no, even in that mourning, even in when we are sad, we have to correct our emotions to the truth because that can overwhelm us. That can become who we are, what we are, what's going on in our life. Instead of correcting and recognizing, no, I mourn the loss of my family member, my loved one that I have, that has died. And I can speak from, from testimony in this. I've shared some of these aspects, but I've, my wife died of cancer and my dad recently died. I know what it's like to go through this and to do it well with the spirit of God, with the help of God, with the leadership of God, to not be overwhelmed and consumed by that moment. We correct our emotions. We correct them with the truth of, of what, well, you know, God is good. And I describe it as we see God from a different perspective. When you see his goodness in hardship and in moments that you can't help, that can't be changed because you just lost a loved one, that type of difficulty that is not because of a bad choice you made. It's not because of failure. You get to experience the love of God and the goodness of God in a brand new way. It's beautiful. And, um, you can experience that in greater and lesser ways, depending on the severity of the hardship. So I want us to understand that, that feelings are good. Feelings are absolutely given by God. God himself has emotions. He talks about his, his own joy. In fact, it's the joy of the Lord. It's his joy that he takes in, in his creation. That is our strength. If he, if he hated creation, if he was miserable, you know, looking at us and not, not taking joy and pleasure of our, of our hearts being drawn to him, he would, we would not be strong. We would not have any strength because he would not be interested in, in the details and the, of creation of, of our life, of, of relationship with us and how he, he works so dynamically and powerfully in our, in our life to develop and cultivate every aspect of which he created us for. He created us with so much capacity and so much ability that he's working and to develop these things because it's, they've been destroyed by sin. And as we come to him and know the grace of Jesus Christ, those things get built back up. Um, it's also, it's easy to misunderstand that when God withdraws his presence from us, either to cause us to pursue him or to expose where we have become selfish or blindly sinned, um, that it's because God does this in response to the condition of our hearts. That's what I've been talking about. Understanding the conditions of our heart, being aware rather than ignoring it and pressing on. We have to understand that it is the result of our failure. It is not God's design for these dry seasons to take place. I really believe that it is not, it is not his design. It is the result of our failure, of our weakness that we experience that. And so I believe we need to, to really grasp that. But 
along with this idea, there's another idea that, that gets taught, that gets go, goes along with the idea of seasons. It's a different perspective, but it's, it's a very similar idea, is that um, seasons will um, that we go through in different times of our life, such as being on fire for God. Maybe we came to the Lord and we're really, really just pursuing God with a lot of intensity for a time. Maybe we're young. We don't have a whole lot of responsibilities. This happens to a lot of people that, and they, they experience, they, they're, they're all about the things of God. And then, um, things like starting a family or going to college, etc. those types of, of life changes will impact the way that we live and, um, the way we manifest or we manifest less zeal in our search for God and that the changes we encounter throughout our life, you know, in those changes, it's God's design that we will actually not be as dedicated to his purposes in our life. And I say it like that because that's to, to illustrate how wrong it is. It is not God's design that you, as you take on different responsibilities or go through different times in your life, there are absolute seasons in our life. We understand this um, because God himself has put many different seasons in, and, and, and we, there's a scripture, and I'll quote it, it says, the, um, there's a time and a season for all things. Everything to, that you experience under the sun, in the world, through your life, there is a time and a season, a time to mourn, a time to have joy, a time for all these different things. We do experience all those things. And so we see them, and it's really easy to get caught up um, in understanding it. And, you know, obviously, you know, you have the four seasons of the earth. You have, you have winter, spring, summer, and autumn. And every year we see this, this cycle of life changing, of the, the trees lose their leaves, the grass dies, and then we have winter and we have, we have the snow. We have different things that, that replenish under the soil. And in the spring, we have the, the rain and the warm comes and everything blooms and blossoms out. And we have beautiful new growth and life. And then we have summer where the, the harvest, the fruit of, of life comes in and, and, and the food is, is harvested. And so our life, we, we see this. We sense that we go through these different times. And, and it's true. It's absolutely a tr true. And like I said, I'm not denying that we experience different things, but I think Jesus teaches us something different. And so I want to read, um, out of Mark and, um, Mark says, yeah, let's pull this up real fast. Mark says that in, in Mark eleven twelve, 12 says, now the next day when Jesus had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples overheard him. Verse 19, when evening had come, he went out of the city. And now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering what <laughs> what Jesus had said, he said, Rabbi, look, the fig tree, which you cursed has withered away. And so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God for assuredly, I say to you, whoever has says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. And therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. <laughs> this, I, I noticed this, how we quote both of these different times. You've probably heard both of these, these things quoted, but hardly ever together. And I wanted to read all of that together because, um, I think it actually ties together in a way that is kind of unexpected. That's why people don't usually quote it together because it, it the seeing the connection is a little bit more difficult, but I want to start with Jesus talks about talks to this tree and says, he says, you will, nobody's ever going to eat from you again. Why did he do that? 
Why did he do that? There's, there's different assumptions being made, but he tells us in the story, gives us the details that are necessary. I don't like it when we imagine things that aren't there. I really don't. I don't like when people read the scriptures and they say, well, it probably, it could have been this. And, this. and we have this whole big long story that the Bible doesn't tell us because the Bible tells us details that are necessary for, because he tells us the details that he wants us to understand, um, to get the right point, not just our own personal experience. And that's what we're, we're talking about today is, is having our personal experience being corrected to see the real thing, the right thing, instead of getting off track because we are just talking about anecdotal experience. So Jesus sees this tree from a distance, has leaves, um, because that's what happens with fruit. The the trees grow um, with leaves, and then they begin to produce um, the fruit. And so he gets over there, and there's no leaves. I mean, no fruit, just leaves. And was Jesus mad? It doesn't say he was mad. I don't believe he's mad. It's, it gives us, tells us why he did this. So his disciples could hear because he wanted them to learn something. He was teaching them something. It says the disciples heard what he said. He wanted to teach them. And it also says it was not in season. It was not the season for figs. Jesus knows that. I mean, if you have been around any type of agriculture, it's you do not expect fruit in in the wrong season. That is not what happens. That's not what you do because you know that there's not going to be anything. Jesus knew just like anybody else that there was no figs on that tree, but he still cursed it. Why? Because he's teaching us something. He's showing us that in whatever season, from a spiritual standpoint, he's saying there is need. God needs you. Jesus needed food. He was wanting, he was hungry. God needs you to be able to produce the food that is necessary for, for everybody that you encounter. This is the idea that he wanted everybody to see. But then he goes and he, he answers and he says something that, you know, kind of seems to be a, a little bit different. And he says, if you have faith in God, anything. So Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt it but believes the things that he says it will be done. Now, <laughs> I don't really want to go into the a faith message about moving mountains and, and those type of things. That's not really my intent right here. But he ties that together. He ties the having faith because this is something that can't be done. I don't think he's saying he's he's saying that we can curse fig trees and they will die. I don't think that's what the message that he's his response to. I think he's talking about the fruit. He's talking about the fruit because the, they knew that it was not season and they heard him do this. And I think that they understood more than what we're saying. Like I said, I don't want to add to the story, but he, his response doesn't make sense without some connection. So the connection that I see is that he's saying that have faith. The things that seem impossible are possible. Having fruit out of season is possible. Actually, that is what God designs you to be from a spiritual standpoint. Listen to what I'm saying. He's not saying just have faith and cast mountains down and, and all these different things. He's actually saying that the mountain is in your heart. It's in your mind, the mountain that of something being impossible, that because we all go through different part, times in our life, we will accept this truth. And God, he's saying, have faith, stand and speak these things knowing that it is true. Know that you can and should have the same fruit, the same power of God in you right now right when you are in the midst of a trying time, a difficult season, um, going through busy, busy uh, obligations in your life. You should have the same fruit of the intimacy and the, and the, the power of God, the oil, the, pr the press of the, of the, of the, fruit of the uh, olives in your life to, to be able to pour out life, giving um, nutrients and healing to the nations, to, to your friends, to, to the needs around you. If you have faith, if you walk by faith and you say this, knowing this, believing it, you will not go through those seasons, those experiences where you, you have fruit or you don't have fruit, be, just like the earth always goes through the seasons. Well, you know, that's another thing. Are the seasons actually God's will? Or are they intended to show us something? God, we learn from them many times, but this is something I've been contemplating. I have been thinking about this. God originally created the earth, and it doesn't appear that there were seasons of winter, fall, spring, 
summer. It doesn't seem like that's the way it was. That seems to be the product of death <laughs> coming on the curse of, of mankind on and the earth. That's why the earth travails. That's why the creation groans, because it's not supposed to be going through this cycle. This is a cycle that we experience and they experience. But God is saying to us through the words of Jesus here, have faith. Speak in confidence, man. This this is getting me excited because I this is the reality that, that we have in God. Jesus is saying, you do not have to be like that fig tree, cursed, because we will be cursed. We will be cursed with death. People will not be able to feed from us ever again. Get that? That is the that is where what happens is we be, we don't. It's not just a season. You're going to have fruit again later. He's saying that if you don't actually live this, there will come a time when the fruit will no longer be there. You will you will wither and die because you don't have this faith. This faith to believe for the impossible faith to see this mountain, this mountain of the idea that you have to go through seasons that you, that, that you won't produce, um, fruit in every area of your life and every season of your life. And that is the faith that he wants us to have. He wants you to well up, to stand up above this, to have the faith that he's calling you to have instead of accepting that you are, it's okay. You're, you're starting a family. You're raising children. You're maybe a homeschool mother. You're teaching to your children. Maybe you are a, a parent, you know, whose kids are teenagers and you're running them um, to all the things that they're participating in. Or, you know, you're, maybe you've taken a, a new job and this job is, is, is requiring you to, to really work hard to try to get a hold of it. Um, there's so many different aspects in life that can, that can take away. And he's saying, have faith. Believe when you say, that uh, this mountain can be removed. The things that, that that seem impossible, that can't be out of the way, we can produce fruit. We can absolutely produce fruit in every moment, every season of our life. And so the next verse that comes to my mind is, and we probably all, every, probably already in your mind as you've been listening, but 2 Timothy 4 verse 1 says, I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Jesus Christ, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. Preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, rebuke and encourage people with good teaching. And in King James, where it says the time is favorable, it says whether in season or out. Whether you are in season or out, you should be having this ability to, to bring forth the word of God. The word of God is, is food for us. It is the, the very bread that, that, that nurtures us. To be able to bring forth this, to preach the word of God, to have the word of God in your heart, in your, on your tongue, to be able to speak it, to be able to come out in season or out. Well, it doesn't matter whether, you, whether any experience in your life matches up with, oh, I'm just, I'm just excited and exuberant about the things of God right now. And so I have something to say. I have something to encourage people with. No, you should have something to encourage people with the day after, the day after you just lost your, your spouse. I believe that. And I can, I can attest to that. And I can testify to the power of God that, that worked in me, that let me do that. The very next day after my wife died, I felt the presence of God and I stood up with my friends, with my brothers and sisters, and they were hurting too. That's the thing that God gave me a vision is that they, they lost a friend. They lost a, a, a sister. They lost a daughter-in-law. They lost different ones. They were hurting too. And to see me be able to stand with the power and the authority of God resting in my life, because it didn't matter what season I was in to worship God, to love God, to experience that it was out of season. That was not in season. It was out of season to be the bread, to be the food, to encourage and strengthen people, other people who were hurting, but also people who didn't know the story at that moment to be encouraged. This is the faith that God wants us to have the faith to be able to pursue him without any fear. 
You are not going to miss out on life. You are going to gain life. You're going to gain it in every area so that you can pursue him. Like I said, this is, I have to always have to give this caveat. It is not, does not mean that you can't focus on your work. This is not, this message has nothing to do with focusing on the needs, the, the important tasks that are to be taken care of. Yes, you have to do those things. That's the kind of the point is that in the middle of doing those things, it's really easy to neglect the spiritual when God is saying, there's plenty of time, there's plenty of ability. Actually, me in the middle of that will make that much more possible. You will be a better worker in a new job. You will be a better parent of young children. You will be a better um, a minister <laughs> when when there's lots of things to take care of. You'll be a better minister if you understand this and you will cast that mountain down, that mountain of belief that says that this is impossible. I can't do this. So I hope I hope this is this has touched somebody. I hope this really speaks to you because this this is my heart. This is this is so much of what God has done in me, what he speaks to me over and over again. I know that sometimes it's a little bit different perspective. It's not that I'm disagreeing with the reality of life. I'm disagreeing with our assumption that we come to, the, the conclusions that we that we draw from those experiences because they don't line up with all the things that God teaches us. The things that God teaches us in his word are, are that there is nothing that can pull you away. Going through a dry season is only because of things that need to be corrected. So correct them. Don't miss that. Don't, don't ignore that. Don't be blinded to that. Let that dry season open your eyes to areas of your life that you've ignored, that you've been completely blinded to so that you can actually grow. And I just want to touch on one, one other thing. For someone who has not really ever experienced this, I, I want to just pray that you would experience this and people who are going through dry times, I want to pray that you, that you would see what it is, open up so that you can actually have times of refreshment and that you can have this intimacy with God that brings a consistent presence of God in your life. So Lord, God, I ask that anyone who's listening to this um, and, any, and, and also friends that don't necessarily hear this, Lord, I pray that you would bring, uh, open their eyes to, to the impact, the reality of, of your intimacy, the closeness that you want to have, that the power of your love and your kindness and your gentleness and the romance of knowing you, that it would that you would open their eyes, that you would bring that about, Lord. And I know that sometimes there are things in our hearts and our minds that, that keep us from there. I pray that, that those things will be bound by your spirit. They would be bound up. They would not have freedom to run in our in the lives of people, that they would that you would bring grace, the power into their life to, to change, to transform, to heal. Lord, bring the intimacy into their life. And people who are going through dry seasons, Lord, I pray that you would open their eyes. Get, let them see. Let them see what you're trying to correct, what you're trying to draw them away from, to remove out of their life. And Lord, I pray for people who are going through different seasons in their life and they've accepted less. They've accepted the belief that, well, now is a time when I'm supposed to just be dedicated to my family. And that is true. We are supposed to be dedicated to our families. That's, but we can't even be that if we're not actually present with you, if we're not actually empowered by you producing this fruit. We can't actually even love our children, love our families the way we're supposed to. So God, I pray that you would, that you would show this and let, we would have faith. That whatever we ask for, whatever we need, this mountain to be removed. This is this is such a beautiful revelation of who you are. So thank you, Lord. I pray that you would do this. Well, that's what I have on my heart. I, I hope that you have been encouraged. I hope that this this lights your fire, that gets you so excited that you can, that you can run this race with endurance, that there is nothing that will slow you down by the power of God. I love you guys. You guys have a great day. Everything lost will be renewed long ago in the garden.